and thank you all for joining us today for this amazing conversation. This morning, the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, many of which are here in the room with us today, adopted our first comprehensive, comprehensive climate equity action plan. Say that again, the first ever comprehensive climate equity action plan. The plan is part of our county strategic priority to respond to climate change and increase community resilience and builds on years of previous work in a number of areas. Our climate is changing rapidly. All we have to do is look outside today as the wind is coming in horizontally and drastic changes from an 86 degree weekend. It's from prolonged extreme heat, drought, intense storms, flooding to massive wildfires that make the air unhealthy for millions of people. This is our new normal and we are seen across the country and on a scale that breaks with observable climate patterns over hundreds of years. Here in Ramsey County, climate change has brought us more days with air quality alerts and extreme heat warnings, more extreme weather, longer allergy seasons, and wetter and warmer winters, and the prospect of more illness caused by disease-carrying insects. These changes impact all our residents, health as well as the health of our natural environment. While climate equity work is not new for Ramsey County, what is new and exciting is that the plan integrates work across the county, making it truly a comprehensive plan, developed with and for community, and centered in equity. It recognizes the growing needs of our community and how climate change disproportionately affects underrecognized communities. With this plan, the county is well positioned to mitigate negative impacts on health and the well being of our residents and to pursue new opportunities and approaches to address climate change. These opportunities can improve our shared infrastructure and the physical environments where we live, work, and play, advance our local economy with green jobs and technology, and expand life sustaining careers that will build our community resilience. Just as all Ramsey County is affected by climate change, all county departments and our community partners have a role to play in addressing climate change. This plan was developed with community and the participation of staff from every county service team. It's designed to bring together and unify work that in the past may have occurred separately without an overarching framework. Today, we go forward with a new focused, coordinated action plan to take an equitable approach to building our county's climate response. I'm happy to turn it over now to Kathy Adine, Deputy County Manager for Health and Wellness Service Team, to talk more about how this plan was developed. Thanks, Commissioner Martinson. Just about every organization today, large and small, is talking about climate change and what they can do about it. What is often missing from that conversation is not adequately addressed, and that's equity. As we started thinking about a comprehensive plan for action on climate change in Ramsey County, we wanted to make sure we centered on equity. We wanted to make sure it was recognized and addressed that while climate change affects everyone, and that's all of us, some communities are affected more than others. That's why we worked with community to first listen and understand how climate change was already affecting communities and what were the, their ideas for taking action. We did that by holding virtual listening sessions, meeting residents in person through our community conversations, creating an online survey to reach those who couldn't attend virtually uh, or in-person events. Those conversations gave us many ideas and reinforced data about the impacts of climate change. When there is poor air quality, like fires that aren't happening here, but we can tell that the smoke is here, the extreme heat, flooding, and again, more disease carrying insects, people from under-recognized communities often must deal with more negative health effects than others. Due to a variety of factors, the negative effects of climate change are much worse for a number of our underrecognized communities, such as Black and African American people, American Indians, Latinos, uh, Asian, and other racially and ethnically diverse people. Those who are immunocompromised, people with chronic illnesses or health complications, and pregnant people. 
people who work outside or are unhoused, people with limited mobility, such as older people and people with disabilities, people who are incarcerated and low income families, and also people who are recent arrivals to our, our, our country and our county, people who don't speak English. The actions in this plan are centered on the knowledge of the disparate impacts to these communities. It looks at the social, economic, physical, and health stressors that result from climate change and the effects of racism and oppression, limited physical ability to endure environmental stress, increased exposure to climate conditions, difficulty getting help during climate emergencies, and barriers to accessing resources. We have an equitable climate action advisory team that will meet soon. This team represents under-recognized communities within Ramsey County. This team will be updated on the climate action work we're doing and share feedback, especially on ways we can make our work more equitable for our community. With that, I will hand it over to our climate and health specialist, Abby Phillips. Thank you, Deputy County Manager Hadeen. Um, in addition to input from community staff and community partners, the county's Climate Equity Action Plan builds on the state of Minnesota's climate action framework. Our plan includes guidance from staff subject matter experts and equity-focused recommendations from the Institute for Building Technology and Safety. Our Climate Equity Action Plan outlines goals, actions, and the county's role in six focus areas, clean transportation, climate smart natural land, thriving communities, clean energy and efficient buildings, healthy lives, and a clean economy. Within each of those focus areas, our plan outlines specific actions the county will take, including both mitigation strategies to reduce emissions or remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, and adaptation strategies to prepare for and adjust to current and projected impacts of climate change. Our goals related to clean, clean transportation are to connect people to places through a safe, equitable, and sustainable transportation system. And that includes improving and maintaining infrastructure for multiple transportation modes, such as public transit and active transportation like biking and walking. This focus area also includes actions intended to reduce carbon emissions and better connect communities. Our goals related to climate smart natural land are to manage county land to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, support healthy landscapes, and increase environmental resilience as well as to support landscape management practices that build environmental, social, and economic resilience, and to help natural ecosystems within the county adapt to the impacts of climate change. Our goals related to thriving communities are to help Ramsey County communities protect against the effects of climate change, to limit the impacts of climate change, and to increase public and critical facilities' ability to withstand the impacts of climate change and continue operating during emergencies. Our goals related to clean energy and efficient buildings are to use policies, investments, and partnerships to try and reach 100% carbon-free, reliable, and affordable electrical power and heat sources in Ramsey County operations and buildings, and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in buildings by promoting conservation and efficiency, as well as to invest in infrastructure that supports living wage jobs and careers and clean energy and contributes to a more stable climate. Our goals related to healthy lives are to partner with community to reduce the direct and indirect health impacts of climate change and to leverage public health resources to help community respond and adapt to the health impacts of climate change. And our goals related to a clean economy are to build an economy that addresses climate change and creates equitable opportunities for people, to offer support for people wanting to work with green businesses and to support the growth of green businesses within the county. The plan will guide the county's work to respond to climate change and increase communi community resilience for years to come. We've convened a climate change governance team composed of department directors from every service team within the county, many of whom are already leading climate action work within their departments. The climate change governance team, or through the climate change governance team, these directors are helping to finalize countywide progress metrics to help us transparently communicate progress made towards the goals in this plan, to prioritize actions within each of the plan's six focus areas, and to identify resources to support these actions. You can read the full plan and learn more about the county's climate action efforts at ramseycounty.us slash climate equity. 
sorry, that should be climate action, ramseycounty.us slash climate action. With that, I'll turn it over to Carrie Collins, Deputy County Manager for the Economic Growth and Community Investment Service team to talk more about what comes next. Thanks so much, Abby. Um, and a round of applause for Abby for the amazing work she, yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll just say, you know, this plan um, really calls on the county to continue to build and uh, continue the great work that departments have already been doing to respond to climate change. Um, it takes it one step further, however. Now we have a very important job of identifying additional resources really needed to be strategic in this work and to mitigate and address the effects of climate change. Um, we've got four kind of main areas uh, to activate this plan and to support our existing and future work. And they are, uh, as Abby mentioned, to convene the climate uh, change governance team. We've already met um, off, off to the races here to fa facilitate cross-departmental support for climate work. We're going to hire new staff to increase our capacity to implement the Climate Equity Action Plan. We're going to dig into funding opportunities that may help us implement the actions and we're going to convene an equitable climate action resident advisory team to review county progress and plans. We have to measure our progress to be able to keep marching forward. The team will also give feedback on how to improve equitable outcomes. And we're hiring a health educator who will focus on climate change, outreach, and engagement to reach under-recognized and climate vulnerable communities. These efforts will support the work that departments within the county are and have been doing to address climate change and advance our community resilience, as well as the additional actions in the Climate Equ Equity Action Plan. We're also excited to share that on May 1st, we are hosting a Green Career and Environmental Health Resource Fair at the Wilder Foundation. We're going to meet local organizations that are committed to recycling, creating green space, and environmental cleanup. We're going to learn about opportunities in green, uh, emerging green careers in uh, various industries, as well as conventional businesses and trades that have shifted to more sustainable practices. More information about this available or this opportunity is available at ramseycounty.us slash green Ramsey Expo. And later this summer, we will have a citizen science urban heat island campaign in partnership with Hennepin County and with support from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Working with partners and citizen volunteers, we'll use heat monitoring sensors uh, on cars to identify urban heat islands. The data we collect with help will help to us to take action to reduce the health impacts of extreme heat and provide cooling relief for those living in the hottest areas. More details coming soon on our climate action webpage at ramseycounty.us slash climate action. And with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Ryan Hart, who will wrap us up. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, as I think most of you know, to say that I'm a passionate climate advocate and activist is putting it mildly. Um, I am really so proud of this plan and the tremendous progress that we've already made. Um, and it's really about protecting the health and safety of our residents and the environment. I can tell you that there are some folks in this room that have been at this as long as I have. And when we started like 30 years ago, uh, we were like voices in the wind. Well, the wind's picked up. So, um, and there's a lot that's happened, and the fact of the matter is, um, you know, I know that there are folks that don't believe in climate change. Well, the science is there, and it's real, but even if you don't, you can do something. You can have an impact, and that's what this is about. It's about empowering people to do that. Um, but if, because the fact of the matter is, if climate change isn't addressed, it threatens to overwhelm the progress and negatively, severely negatively, uh, impact the health and well-being of our communities in ways that we must not let happen, period. I am so excited about this Climate Equity Action Plan because it takes one of the largest threats we are all facing and turns it into an opportunity to build health equity across our systems in everything from energy, transportation, and land use to jobs. Without transformational action like that we have outlined in this plan, climate change will be increasingly severe, leading to worsening health inequities. We know this work will take all of us, and we know that we will not be able to reverse all climate impacts in our own lifetimes. But we must continue this important work, and Ramsey County is committed to that work. And again, I just wanna stress the fact that every single person makes an impact. As a group, we will actually try to overcome as much as we possibly can. So it's up to each of us 
and together we will make an impact. With that, I'd like to open it up for any questions from the media. Any questions? We'll be, oh, go ahead. Yeah, there were a number of themes that occurred in almost every forum that we use to connect with people. Um, one of the main ones I would say is that folks want to know more. They want to know more about how climate change is impacting people in Ramsey County, what the county is already doing in terms of providing resources to help people address these impacts, and what we could be doing. So there was a lot of conversation around the possibilities and the the situation as it is, helping people understand what the health impacts are, what the environmental impacts are, and what the economic impacts are of this issue. Another thing that people were very focused on was the intersection of climate change with economic status and how, how that ties into the vulnerabilities in a really significant way, whether we're talking about health vulnerabilities or housing vulnerabilities or um, workforce solutions, I see Ling nodding. There are so many things that are connected both to economic status and to climate change. Uh, so we have a couple of events coming up this summer that I would say that are the main key dates to pay attention to. One of those is May 1st. We have our Green Career Fair and Environmental Health Resource Fair. And then sometime in late June or early August, we'll run our Urban Heat Island campaign. We can't pick the date for that too far in advance because it relies on particular weather conditions. But if you stay tuned to our website, you'll see more information about that. Um, in terms of implementing the rest of the plan, we've assigned all of the actions near, mid, and far-term timelines. Those are sort of intentionally broad because we're still doing the work of figuring out what resources we have available and what resources we, we need to pursue in order to implement all of these actions across the county system. You guys want to add anything? Okay. <laughs> That is a good question. Um, we're already getting started on the near-term actions, and our climate change governance team is actively prioritizing the actions that we haven't gotten started on. So that's current. Um, some of those actions will be completed as soon as this year, and some of them will take a bit longer just because of the nature of the work. The midterm actions, I would say in the next, I'm guessing, but four years, we'll be able to figure out what resources we have available to implement the work and what we need to communicate will take longer. And then the long-term actions are those sort of ongoing 10-year or longer items. And I'd like to point out also that there's a lot of activity that's already going on and it's in different areas. So it's not like, oh, we're gonna take on this issue and do it throughout the county. For example, we have transit and transportation projects and looking at electric buses and, and different things like that and what we need to do in public works. We have in environmental health, we are working right now on an anaerobic digester for waste so that we can um, make syngas out of it and biochar and that doesn't mean anything to anybody but me and some of the other folks in this room. But the fact of the matter is it's new technology because waste is produced, garbage is produced, we can pull out recyclables, organics, and so forth. So that's active right now. And all of these different pieces, and those are just a couple, all of these pieces are happening now, but it's how we ramp them up and bring them together. And some of it can go faster than others because some of it is not under our control. For example, with uh, transit, uh, that's Metro Transit, but we can influence it and we're pretty good at that. And so, um, I guess really what it comes down to is um, sometimes people put together plans that kind of sit on a shelf and say, well, that's what we want to do. Um, that's not the way Ramsey County works. We are, it is an action plan and that's what it means. And so you're going to see things in different areas all across the county, workforce solutions. I mean, all of this is work that is underway 
and will be ramped up as we are able to get more resources. Um, and some of that is through the state legislature. And there's, there's a lot of different steps in it. But there's activity taking place now, and it's going to be ramped up. And hopefully we'll have all the folks um, in the county that are with us on this, because it takes individual actions as well. Thank you. I think in addition to that, uh, it will also depend on what community is looking for from us. Um, from the beginning of this, as we stated, we've been working with community to listen and understand. And what we also heard was they don't speak the same language we do. So resilience, vulnerability, these aren't terms that in mitigation, they're not terms that are normal to just everyday people um, in, in our community. And so we have to listen and understand that, oh, they're talking about asthma. And asthma is could be caused by traffic on the freeway. And so maybe that's where they want to focus um, their efforts as they move forward. So it will also depend on um, how community leans in, um, how they expect us to lean in uh, in order to respond to what they're feeling with the extreme heat, with weather, and what changes they want made. I want to just add one more event. There's actually one this Saturday at Battle Creek Park. We'll be meeting from 10 to 12 for our annual Mississippi River Cleanup Challenge. Um, Parks and Rec, along with the commissioner's offices, are challenging everyone in Ramsey County to come out and do a cleanup. So we invite the entire community to come out and help us clean up the Mississippi River. So it's tangible in that short-term example, but long-term, as Kathy said, about what does community want, how do we invest, and how is it also so tied to our budgeting process. So as these teams meet, there will be things that inherently come up that say, we need, to, we need to address this, we need to budget for it, we need to prioritize it. So we'll continue to do that work. I think what's really important is this framework gives us an example that we can follow throughout. So when policies come to the board, um, RBAs, request for board actions come, we can do it through this lens of climate equity as well. So as we're investing our dollars in affordable housing, we can say, do we prioritize uh, funding based on climate action as well? So it really is a framework in which we do all of our work from here forward. Are there any other questions? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, the cities have, um, they've been really great leaders in, in terms of uh, doing uh, climate and resilience work. Um, there's kind of a Green Step Cities program that they all uh, participate in. And, you know, just like any other area, whether it's, uh, you know, investments in affordable housing and in infrastructure or programmatically, um, we want to partner with the cities to make sure that we can advance our goals and that we're advancing the goals at the municipal level too. So much of, of the work that's identified with this in, uh, in this plan is going to require a, a very close partnership with the cities. Uh, we know that they're committed to uh, the goals of the plan, and so we, we're going to start to implement that and, and really partner with them intentionally to figure out how we can make major strides in these areas um, because we, we've got to be lock and step with our community partners, including our cities. Okay, any other questions? Then I will turn it, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, climate climate is a huge challenge. Obviously, we have to be ready and nimble because it can surprise us. Um, the other thing is resources and staffing. So we need to also make sure that we have the ability to implement. So we'll keep an eye on that, on how do we draw down funds from federal opportunities, grants, partnerships, uh, money from the state legislature, as well as our own levy dollars as we prioritize this work. And then to make sure we have the staffing. You know, when we um, implemented this three years ago, uh, we didn't have anyone that was dedicated to climate action and we hired Abby. Um, and, but Abby can't do climate action by herself. It really will take all of us, which is why this plan is inclusive of every department. But we also know, as we mentioned, that we'll be hiring additional folks to help with community engagement, with training and education around climate change and health equity. Um, and we'll continue to do that as we move forward. And I think another part of that is 
that we, because we are going to be measuring things and making sure that we track our progress, when we go for additional funding for things, just as we do now, um, we have data to back it up or, or what the challenges are and what they'll cost and trying to, to really engage all the partners. And that's, you know, from municipal to uh, county to state and federal and everything in between. <laughs>